first of all, we would like to thank the conference organizers for accepting our paper. The aim of our presentation is to discuss some preliminary results from a fieldwork project carried out last year at the Roman military complex of Ardock in Scotland. This research was a result of, collabor of a collaboration between the archaeology departments of Edinburgh and Marburg in Germany, and it was carried out thanks to the support of the Carnegie Trust. The Roman military complex of Ardock at Braco in Perth and Kinross, Scotland, is one of the most important archaeological sites for the study of Rome's military expansion in Northern Britain. It comprises the remains of a main fort with a rectangular area of around two hectares that you can see here in the image. And in addition, also at least five partly overlapping marching camps dating from between the first and the third centuries AD. These camps constitute one of the best preserved series of military earthworks in the whole of the Roman Empire, particularly the main fort that you can see in the image. During the course of the fieldwork campaign carried out in March 2016, a geomagnetic plan of the entire main fort was completed, provided new insights into the internal organization and the defenses. Some selected areas were also analyzed by means of geoelectric. This research was complemented with a drone flight of the main fort and some uh, nearby areas, producing a high resolution digital elevation model of the archaeological site. But before I start with the new research, uh, it is necessary to provide a short historical background for the site. After the invasion of Caledonia by Julius Agricola in the late 70s AD, the Roman troops advanced towards the north and defeated a confederation of native tribes at the Battle of Mons Graupius in AD 83 or 84. The exact location of the battle is a matter of debate, but it must have taken place somewhere between Aberdeenshire and Inverness. Despite the claims of a huge Roman victory in Roman written sources, the fact is that the legions immediately or very soon after retreated to the south and established the so-called Gasbridge frontier. It was not a wall, but a chain of forts and watchtowers aimed at separating the highlands, likely center of any insurgency, from five. This gas ridge line remained active in active use for less than a decade before the Roman military withdrew far the south. However, some forts were reused or rebuilt in later phases. Among them, the most important and spectacular one is Ardog. This fort has sometimes been identified with the Launa mentioned in Ptolemy's geography. The earliest fort is associated with the campaigns of Agricola in the late first century AD, while the latest reuse of the military complex took place in the framework of the campaigns by Emperor Septimius Severo, Severus in the early third century AD. The site was also reused in the medieval period when a chapel was built near the center of the fort. Since the 18th century, Ardoc attracted the interest of antiquarians and archaeologists due to its impressive earthworks. The fame of the site is also reflected, for example, by the visit of by Queen Victoria and Prince Albert in 1842. Mm. Yeah, so this is the main fort with impressive earthworks that are still very visible uh, today and here you can see remains of uh, an annex and several marching camps partly overlapping uh, from different periods of time late 1st century AD, 2nd century and early 3rd century AD. As already mentioned, Ardock is one of the most important sites in Scotland and also an iconic place for the study of Rome's military expansion in northwestern Europe. Excavations at the end of the 19th century and in 1970 provided insights into the complex sequence of development of the Roman camps. In the 1990s, first geophysical surveys were carried out by a team from Glasgow University over a part of the fort. Although promising, the results remain largely unpublished. Since then, geophysical methods such as geomagnetic and georadar have developed enormously, both in quantitative and qualitative terms. 
The aim of the current project was to carry out extensive geophysical surveys on the central fort, the annex and some of the nearby matching camps, using the newest methodologies which have already been applied by the directors of the project in a number of sites in Spain, Portugal and the Balkans. It also included a drone flight which produced photo images that are the base of a high resolution digital evaluation model of the archaeological site. The results are relevant both from a methodological point of view and for the wider field of Roman women's studies. For local serving, we work with a Leica total station that allows us to take the exact coordinates of the prospected fields using a local measuring network. In the next step, we use a differential GPS to transfer the local points to a projected monitoring network. For the geophysical survey, two different measuring methods were applied, magnetometry and geoelectric resistivity. This allows a comparative analysis of the different methods and results. During the four days of fieldwork, a total of 18 fields of different dimensions could be examined by the magnetometer. A total area of 26,000 square meters was prospected. Two of the fields are located outside the main fort, while all the other measurements are situated within the inner area of the main fort. <coughs> For the magnetometry, we use a Magneto Arc 5 channel system, an instrument produced by the German survey company Sensis, Sensoric and System Technology. This is a kind of two wheel barrel which is pushed over the area. The multi channel magnetometer system uses five probes of the FGM 653 type. The measuring range is circa 3000 nanotesla and its accuracy is 0.1 nanotesla. The distance between the probes was 25 centimeters, thus allowing the simultaneous measurement of bands one meter wide. The travel distance was documented by an odometer, which was fixed to one of the wheels. Rectangular grids were laid out, always attempting to cover as much as possible of the expected archaeological features, by at the same time trying to avoid potential disturbances such as trees, fences and metal rubbish. The following interpretation of the geomagnetic prospection images is still preliminary, based on the first evaluation of the data. In the measurements of the fields 4 and 20, situated outside the Roman fort, strong anomalies can be observed. This is caused by objects with high magnetic conductivity. Moreover, metal fences were built between the fields, generating extreme interferences in field 4 at the northeast and in field 20 at the southwest and the northwest. We also detected anomalies which may be created by, anthropogenic, by other anthropogenic influences. In field 4, some structures can be suspected, but are extremely hypothetical. More interesting are results in field 20, where two rounded anomalies are visible in the southwest. Even if we can see the extreme influence of the modern metal fence, this position fits perfectly with the postulated corner of one of the marching camps. No other anthropogenic structure has been identified in sectors 4 and 20. Inside the main fort of about 2 hectares, the geomagnetic survey reveals many anomalies. Most visible is a modern water line, showed as very strong dipoles. The pipeline runs through the northern gate of the Roman camp in a north-south axis, crossing the entire measured area. Its existence was also confirmed by a local worker. In the center of the former Roman camp, it is possible to see the medieval chapel, a surrounded fortification wall, and a linear earthwork which gives access to this medieval structure coming from the south. So this is the thick water line and this is the medieval chapel in the center of the Roman military complex. The geomagnetic survey could cover the entire inner area of the fort. The results allow us to confirm information from previous archaeological work, mainly the excavations from the late 19th century, <coughs> but also enrich our knowledge thanks to the identification of new details and new structures. For better orientation, the main area has been divided into four sectors. In the northwest area that you can see here in the image, the most striking feature are the linear anomalies running north-south. 
The meaning is not completely clear, although the most likely option is that they represent traces of ancient fields. A particularly strongly dipole near to the northwest corner of the camp might indicate the position of a large metal object in the ground. In the northeast area, here in Bitan, uh, we know that uh, the area was excavated during the archaeological fever late of the late 19th century. Therefore, Roman barracks are already known. Most of them consisted of post hole constructions from the older period, and one was built with stone foundations belonging to a later period. Comparing the results of the old excavations with the geomagnetic survey, more anomalies can be recognized in measurement image. For example, many small rectangles of two to three meters. Whether they indicate archaeological features or traces from the old excavations is not always completely clear. In the southwest area, a strong anomaly is detected at one of the corners of the chapel. Its location coincides with a large pit documented in the old excavations. In the southern part of the southwest area, elongated north-south running anomalies can again be observed. These are very likely further structures, since in the course of the old excavations, a building was partially excavated in this area. As could be expected, the excavations identify some larger buildings in the center of the Roman camp, organized around a central court, which can be interpreted as the Principia and the Praetorium, the domus of the responsible officer. The magnetometry results confirm their existence and show some further architectural <coughs> details. Thanks to the new results, we can now give the exact georeferencing of these buildings, which were partly unclear uh, based on the old excavation documentation. Some of these buildings might be constru constructed in timber and others in stone. Finally, the southeast area was already partially investigated in the old excavations, which led to the identification of part of a building. This building can now be seen completely in the measurement image. At least south of the complex, two north-south running anomalies can also be recognized. In the southwest, it is possible to clearly observe the trenches of defenses, which are not visible on the first surface anymore in this area here. So they are partly visible in, in the, uh, nowadays, but we identified other structures that cannot be seen anymore. <coughs> on the southeast corner, the magnetometer survey was able to go beyond the fortification structure itself, Although the rampart is presently leveled and the ditches are filled in, the geophysical image shows that we have to expect more than the known two ditches, most probably three or four. A general assessment of the geomagnetic data from the main fort shows that the most prominent features are the long linear structures that follow the orientation of the camp in both north-south and east-west direction. They are probably related to the inner structure and possibly the architecture of the Roman camp. Especially in the northeast sector, these lines fit perfectly together with the Roman barracks, which had already been observed during excavations in this area. At the same time, it is possible to distinguish between wooden structures, which appear lighter in the magnometer results, and stone structures, like the building A in the northeast. So this is a comparison from plan from, old, from the old excavations and results from the uh, geomagnetic. In addition to the geomagnetic survey, during the fieldwork we also applied resistivity. It was possible to analyze three fields, A to C, with a total area of nearly one hectare. A Lippmann geophysical measuring equipment was used in twin arrangement. The measuring point and measuring row spacing were 0.5 meters respectively. The data were imported into the program surfer, generating a raster image. A trend removal filter was applied. The electrical measurements offer different views of the inner construction of two large stone structures, possibly Roman buildings. The final aspect of our research was an aerial photo documentation for which we used two flight systems a quadcopter and a fixed wing aircraft system. Both aerial vehicles had a digital camera on board with interval photography setting. The quadcopter was in action three times. It was used in the main area of the Roman fort, flying at a height of about 45 meters to the ground. 
The fixed wing aircraft flew <laughs> twice at a height of about 100 meters as part of a large scale investigation of the Fowler surrounding camps. A total area of 52 hectares was documented with the fixed wing aircraft and about 9 hectares with the quadcopter. From the more than 1300 photos, two orthophotos and two digital terrain models were calculated by using the software Photoscan Agisoft. Points on the ground were measured and marked for georeferencing. With both systems of unmanned aircraft vehicles, every flight pass had the same distance to the last overflown pass. This is an important factor for getting a higher quality photogrammetry. Each photo must overlap sufficiently and have the adequate lengths. The aerial image provides an overall plan of all fortification structures, thus representing a significant advance compared to older plans where only parts of selected sections are usually shown. The conservation state of the monument during spring 2016 is exactly documented in a 3D model. Unknown structures can be suspected in the forest on the northwest. Moreover, a software-generated 3D movie based on the drone flight can be the base for future presentation of the site to the general public in an attractive, an attractive and accessible way. So this, uh, this is one of the models we generated from the main camp, and this is a broader uh, plan that we generated, uh, including also structures from the uh, other marching camps in the surroundings. And very briefly, I will try to show you the movie that we generated. <laughs> uh, this is now on YouTube. We'll do some further work to make it a bit more attractive and maybe introduce some sound that we don't have now, but just to uh, show you a bit uh, some, some of the images and then the model that we generated. So this is the, the chapel in the middle of the main fort. Are different fortification, different fortification lines, and now it's going outside the main fort to document traces from the marching camps. Get a result in 3D model. The reason that we stopped here is that there is a modern road, so we couldn't go further in this direction. And this airswork in the, of the main fault, they don't belong to the all to the same period, they're different phases in the construction of the fortifications. So the video could do with some music, but we, could, we couldn't decide couldn't decide on that yet. But we have a, a thought about it. So to come to an end, the combination of geophysical surveying and aerial images images from with structure from motion 3D modeling 
is an extremely useful tool both for the heritage monitoring of an archaeological site and for further investigation. In the case of RDOC, the large-scale combination of drone flight and geophysical service represents an innovative research project in the archaeology of the Roman gas-rich frontier. The aerial images show an exact georeference compilation of all available structures on the surface. With these informations, we have a conserved state of the entire monument, which can serve as a basis for future comparisons and monitoring of the archaeological site from a heritage perspective. On the other hand, the geophysical survey, magnetometry and resistivity allows to gain insight into areas which have not been examined during the excavations. Outside the main Roman camp, the corner of a marching camp fortification could be observed on field 20. Regarding the main fort, it was possible to obtain information about the fortification system, ditches and rampart on the southeastern side. In the inner area, the type of signals, magnetometer, makes it possible to differentiate between lighter structures, timber building for the first of the first period, and stone buildings. Known structures such as the medieval chapel with, with its access way and the Roman stone building identified during the course of the old excavations can also be clearly recognized, but also further rectangular structures west and east of the chapel. While large-scale magnetometry offers a general view of the inner area of the fort, the resistivity prospection was able to focus on details, especially on stone structures. This way, it has been possible to obtain more information about the inner structure of the main camp, as well as to prove the existence of the northwest corner of the marching camp. This data, which will further be processed and published, can serve as the basis for future research on the site. Thank you.